So now everything's unhooked from the motor. I've got the front wheels off, axle nuts off, and I've got an air tool, long extension, and this special little 12 point tip that goes into the Volkswagen axle bolts. And just use my air tool on the end and whip them off. Then I can pull the motor out while the axles just drop down and hang. Then once the motor's pulled, I can just shove the axle through and drop it on the ground. I don't even have to undo the steering knuckle or the ball joint nut at the bottom. Much more simpler than doing it with like the Chrysler style. And like I mentioned before, if this was a Chrysler motor, there would be three bolts here holding up the transmission. On the modification I made on the Volkswagen, I put a new motor mount on where there didn't used to be one, but there was a good place to put one there anyways. And it has two bolts, and there's one bolt in this hole you can get access to when you take that plastic panel off. So you put a jack under the motor, undo those two bolts, and that one makes no difference which order. Let the transmission fall down a bit, get the motor mount out, then attach the chain to another little chain on your motor mount lifting hooks, like that one there, and get ready to yank. The front motor mount I already described, it's too well together, is unbolted, and when the motor just starts to lift, it'll lift out of the way, I'll just pick it out with my hand. Everything else is ready to go. So, got the tool in place. Every time I install that little bit into one of those Allen key holes, I tap it in with a hammer so it goes in all the way so nothing gets stripped when I'm using this tool. Well, there's one out. And I just rotate the rotor a sixth of a turn, bring the next one to the top, and undo that. And keep using that step till I'm all done. Then off to the other side. There, the axle's separated, now to do the other side. Alright, other axles unbolted now. Now ready to give her a tug. That's what she said. Well, let's hope I didn't forget anything. Just as easy as pulling a Chrysler motor, maybe easier as I didn't have to undo the ball joints. Remember years ago I had this motor hanging in the air and I made a video called Starting the Swinging Diesel. Now to throw that other wheel on and roll the van out. Oh, we're looking at the front of the motor. And there's that hybrid front motor mount I told you about that's half a Volkswagen and half a Chrysler one welded together. Goes right there. The back of the VW tranny already has these two bosses with holes in them, just like a Chrysler tranny has, just a different shape. So this is the Chrysler transmission mount with a bracket welded onto it that fits on there, so it becomes Chrysler style mounting. Volkswagen uses a flange that comes off here made of aluminum with a round plate and a round hole in it and that sits on a rubber pocket that's full of gel as the back motor mount and I just saw that off it gets in the way. On the front of the motors on Volkswagen they have another mount just like that one that comes out here. I just unbolt that one and take it out of the way. And down there is my power steering pump assembly with bracket that was broken off with the broken bolts and that's the Chrysler pump. Volkswagen would be mounted here at the front. Volkswagen pumps suck. They always go bad. <laughs> and they get broke off easy jumping and hitting bumps. So I made this special bracket that attaches the Chrysler one here. And that's one bolt that broke. It looks like the other bolt didn't break. It was a piece of the flange. And then another one broke back there. 
I think I can get them all out. Looks oily enough that they're not seized. And of course it's turbo. That's a good turbo. The way you tell is almost no side play on the shaft and it spins freely and you don't see like grinding marks where the blades have been hitting the aluminum housing and chewing it. And unlike Volkswagen but like Chrysler I have a Chrysler motor mount going through the timing cover like Chrysler's do unlike Volkswagen's which was very tricky to hook up because I still had to make it able to fit in between the timing belt assemblies and pulleys and be able to change the timing belt at the same time. Still uses the VW alternator. They wire pretty much the same as the Chrysler. And of course that's a VW tranny. And now for the axles. They're hybrids too. The part with all the bolts I showed you, the bolts to those flanges, is Volkswagen. And I machined a coupler on a lathe. Had a different size hole in the coupler here and a different size hole here because Chrysler and Volkswagen have different diameter axles and that's the Chrysler outer end. Then it's just welded and balanced. Same thing with that axle. It looks factory like a complete axle but actually if you look down here there's a weld and this is a hollow axle so I did the same thing but opposite. I machined a solid plug that went inside the axle. Different diameter here and different diameter here then press both pieces together and welded it all the way around and balanced it while I was welding it. Did all that nine years ago, never knew if it was going to last because I never welded front wheel drive axles together before but being the fact that this motor only has about 74 horsepower it's not a whole lot. I wouldn't try this with a high performance turbo car, at least not with how I did it. Now I just gotta take the clutch assembly, shifter assembly, speedometer few cables and stuff like clutch cable, throttle cable and stuff out of this van, save them, then scrap it.